last sentence um, of, of the stuff I've already marked up. More than 2,500 firefighters were combating the blaze as of Tuesday morning, officials said. Okay, we've got a couple of things going on here. It's a pretty sta straightforward um, uh, verb phrase, right? We're combating. We've got a pretty nice, simple subject, too. I could, I'll label them. Um, you, I'll give you a key in your assignment to make it easier. And just for thoroughness. Right? They were combating the blaze. The blaze is the object of the sentence as of Tuesday morning. I would call that a prepositional phrase because it's telling, locating the thing in time and space. Officials said, what's this? This is a really important thing. We're going to look at it in the paragraph before. What we're looking at um, in journalistic writing in particular is a very special structure where you have a verb, and it's a tense verb, which introduces which introduces something that is said or stated or thought, and they introduce whole clauses. So this whole thing, I'm going to highlight it. You don't have to. Um, I highlight it. So if we could turn this around. We could say officials said more than 2,500 firefighters were combating the blazes of Tuesday morning. This is a signal phrase that you've probably seen in your other classes, probably in English 125. When you're introducing a quotation, you need to do it with a verb. So this whole thing, I'm going to change, I'm going to highlight it all now just to draw your attention to it. This whole thing is a sentence in its own right. It's got two verb phrases, right? Um, so what does this mean? How do, how do we account for this? We've still got to indicate that this is a verb phrase here. So how are they connected to each other? Well, we can't say official said and not have it have something in it at the end. So we're going to call this a verb that takes a clausal complement. Now, complement means it's something that it needs in order to be complete. So we see one here. We also see one in this sentence here. Um, that we've got the same the same thing. We've got said Judy Klein that comes afterwards. So that all belongs together. And I'm going to put it in uh, square brackets again. Square brackets are useful. Whoa. That wrong. Square brackets again. And then I'm going to say um, a VCC, whoops, a verb with a clause or complement. And I want, to, I want to indicate that all these things belong together. That we're not just looking at two completely separate clauses that we and but we're also we have to take into account the verb phrases in both of them so here we have a verb, verb phrase which is said and look the subjects even afterwards you can say Judy Klein said so these verbs of saying and showing are special kinds of things um, if you have trouble with it email me and I will do a lecture on it but I'm hoping this will give you enough information so with a verb of saying and showing, you can actually put the subject afterwards. It's the only, except in questions, it's the only um, kind of sentence that you can use that, do that, switch around generally. So, and then we say that this is something in its own right as well. So it's hard to breathe, and we'll expand that. It is uh, bold. T orcs. Actually, no, that's the main verb. Hard is not a uh, verb. So it is hard to breathe. That's the main verb. It is the subject. So, makes sense? And then what we have here, just for a bonus, even though I'm sure you're kind of sick of this, um, this whole thing, underline it. What is it? What does it begin with? It begins with a relative pronoun. It gives us an idea. It has a comma, and this comma indicates to us that it's not a restrictive relative clause, that it's a non-restrictive relative clause. 
That's a very important point to keep in mind. A non-restrictive relative clause will be generally separated from the noun it um, modifies by a comma. So we're looking at a non-restrictive relative clause here. Once again, we have a, still have a verb. We've got a subject -y kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to put in the end and uh, uh, see. Okay. So we've just done five paragraphs. We've seen a lot of the things that we're looking for. Have we seen all of them? We've seen a participial phrase, dependent clause, prepositional phrase, non-restrictive relative clause, uh, reduced relative clause. I think we still have one of them, even though I had my mistake. No, we haven't got a um, restrictive relative clause. Um, I'm going to see quickly if I can find one of them for you. Um, by the way, this is a full relative clause, the blistering snowstorm that um, swept through Greer last win winter. Why? That is another word that functions as a uh, 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 relative pronoun. This is all in your textbook. It's going to take some practice. Why are we doing this? So that next assignment, when I want you to write sentences in a certain way, I can say, I want to see a sentence with a participial phrase, with a um, full relative clause, that kind of thing. You're not going to ask me what. So the first half of this course really is about terminology and you getting really comfortable with figuring out the terminology. Um, uh, just looking quickly um, for a restrictive uh, a relative cause or a reduced relative cause. This is not very interesting, is it? But you know what you're going to be doing when you go through this is um, um, spending a little bit of time on each paragraph and looking for everything. So you're not going to be doing what I'm doing here, um, which is just going through quickly to look for something. Let's see. Apparently not. Apparently we're not thinking. Here we are. Due to the smoke and ash from wildfires burning in that state in Arizona. I turn this blue. Um, the smoke and ash from wildfires. Where are the wildfires burning? That's what burning is telling us. So here we have a restricted relative clause um, and it's reduced. Why? Because we can say wildfires that were burning. So we can uh, we can move through and uh, just find it like this. And the hint, the clue that we got is that um, I'm going to move this up to the middle of the page a little. There, that's easier to see. Um, we've got a, past, a present participle, but no auxiliary here. And we've got a noun right next to it. So we're going to call this, whoops. We're going to call that the head noun. And uh, that's what we've got. Okay, so that's probably enough. Please email me if you need if you need help, if you have questions. Uh, that's the best way to proceed from now. But I think this should give you a start. It's a detailed assignment. It's going to take you time. Okay, remember, ask your group, do the wiki exercise. Good luck. Bye.